Welcome back. So if you saw my last video, you probably realize I've been sort of revamping my home AV setup. And one of the other things that I did recently that has made a huge difference is, I don't know if you guys saw my, my prior video on hooking up multiple systems, but I had sort of a chain of those little cheap uh, sort of four-way switchers. And they're really, you know, it's really not a great system. And so I finally decided to go with something else. And so I, what I have for you right now is the uh, uh, Xtron series, and this is a matrix switcher. Uh, this is the Mav series. Um, there's also the Crosspoint series. It's very popular. Now, I actually got this um, off of eBay, and the seller is someone who deals in government surplus, and this is where you can find these sorts of things. Uh, cheap. You definitely don't want to buy a new one because they really only uh, do business with like big, you know, clients like corporations, governments, etc. So you're probably not going to find one of these new anyway. Um, but definitely sort of keep an eye out, and you can get get these at very reasonable prices um, through, uh, like I said, uh, military surplus uh, sellers. And this one I actually got for twenty bucks. And as you can see here, it actually has 12 inputs on it and 8 outputs. I don't know why in the world I need that many outputs, but um, I'm sure whoever was using this needed it, but um, just two will be fine for me. Um, but anyway, you can connect any number of systems directly into this, and it will send it out to uh, whatever outputs you want. Um, it also has different presets. You can also do just video or just audio. Um, and yeah, it's really convenient. I mean, it's really easy to use if you <clears throat> don't want to use a preset or anything. Um, you literally just will press like one and one to give your input and output and enter in that and it'll switch it to that. So now why don't more people know about this? And that was sort of the question that I had when I stumbled upon it. And there's a couple of reasons. The first, which you may notice on the back here, is these inputs probably don't look all that familiar to you. Um, unless you're into, uh, you know, professional video. And that's because these are BNC connectors, and that's a standard that's used in a lot of professional video applications, but not a lot in sort of our home theater systems and whatnot. But what's cool about this is uh, this will take um, either a S-video composite. As far as I know, it'll even take an RF signal doesn't matter. Anything, uh, it'll take it and it'll send it directly back out. Now, it doesn't transform the signal at all. So the problem that you might run into is if you have like, you know, composite and S video signals um, both hooked in at the same time, you can't like say take an S video signal and input one and send it to a composite out uh, with output one. It won't, won't do that because it won't transfer the signal um, to a composite. So the good, the, the good news is that you can do all those things. The bad news is you can only send uh, you know, one type to its own uh, output. But it shouldn't be too hard to figure out how to get around. You can either organize it with your S-Video inputs first and then your composite and then send those each out separately, um, which shouldn't be too difficult. Or you can just, uh, what I've done for the most part is just upgraded everything to S-Video and not, uh, not worried about it. Now you will need to get these little adapters. Uh, let's see. Not sure how well you can see that. So this one here is for a composite uh, signal. And so, you know, if you have one of these like this, you can just put it down on your BNC and it twists and then sort of is locked in place there. So it's nice and solid, then you can plug your, uh, your composite cable in there and then your two audio uh, in the bottom two. And this one is your S-Video adapter. 
These are a little bit more expensive. The composite ones are, I mean, you can get them for pennies a piece. Uh, the S-Video ones will cost you a couple of dollars a piece, but I think they're, they're uh, you know, it's a nicer quality signal, nicer quality adapter. Um, you know, you get the point. So, and again, you just snap those on like that. And the good thing about these S-Video adapters, too, is they have a nice little uh, sort of indented ring so you can put a label on them. So, for instance, I've uh, labeled this one for my North American Saturn. So that way when you're, you know, you're sort of hooking all these things up, you can actually sort of keep track of where everything is. Now, uh, this particular unit has the, uh, the RCA hookups for the left and right audio. And be sure when you're looking at these, because they, they, when they originally build these, they build them to order. So, um, you know, there are all sorts of different configurations. And you can get more than 12 inputs, in fact. I've, I've seen them with, you know, crazy numbers of inputs. Also, you can get them that will do component video, so they'll have the, the three different inputs. Those will also do um, your S-Video, your composite video, etc. Um, and you can also get them in VGA, which I have. And um, this sort of smaller VGA switcher here, um, this is just a two-port, two um, two-input, two-output uh, VGA switcher and the thing that this this one sort of shows pretty well is the difference in the output um, uh, sound and a lot of your uh, the Crosspoint series in particular will have this type of sound connection let's see there you go and so you can see it actually needs um, bare wires to go into um, to this guy here and then you you'll actually screw them down uh, with these screws here. Now the benefit is that you've got a nice solid connection there and it sort of plugs in, it's not going anywhere. Um, the, the bad part about it is that if you're you know connecting all of your systems up, in order to do this you either have to buy you know little um, RCA extenders and then cut the wires or you just have to cut the wires for your your audio and that's not neither of those really sounded like a good idea to me. So, um, so I, I looked around for a little bit longer till I found one with the regular um, just RCA inputs. Uh, the other thing is if you're buying one of these, uh, you know, from a, uh, a surplus or any kind of a reseller, a lot of times they literally just cut these things out of system, so like it won't come with your, your power source, so you'll need that. Uh, in this case, you guys can probably, uh, you probably recognize that shape. And honestly, you just you just need a cord. It's not like you don't need a transformer or anything like that. Uh, all that's built in. You just need the cord uh, to hook that up. And it's the same sort of power cord uh, that you use for most um, computers. Um, honestly, a lot of uh, a lot of sound equipment, just about anything um, that that you know needs a nice big three prong uh, grounded plug. So um, so now that I've showed you this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you uh, my complete setup now, or just you know just sort of show you me switching through all of these to show that it works. And I also have a couple of other systems that I don't have hooked into this. My composite ones I have hooked into um, just another cheap little switcher that automatically detects if one's on and switches it to that. So I've got this one for S video. And for right now, I have my composites going over there. I'm going to upgrade those uh, eventually, but um, that works for now. So, uh, so yeah, let me let me show you how all that works. And I almost forgot I was going to show you guys where I put it back here. Of course, we have our ColecoVision here, and behind all of this, we have the FrameMeister, and this is the sort of uh, inexpensive uh, sort of automatic switcher that I told you guys about before. And so we actually have this guy going into here through S-Video and all my composite systems coming in through here as well and then it goes out through S-Video to the FrameMeister. Um, so that was just the easiest way. This is auto-sensing so, you know, there's no worry about, uh, you know, having to switch anything. It just automatically detects uh, what's on. So here we have our Extron switcher and as you can see I actually just used um, these are like your common garden variety, like uh, deck nails or whatever. You have to drill a little hole first and then put them in there. No big deal. Um, and they're nice and secure, so then you can turn it on. You can see 
Uh, as I was talking about before, you can either turn the audio video on or off. And, uh, you know, for instance, you can just hit one, one, and enter. And then that will send those two signals if there's something there. So, uh, and those will stay lit if there's actually signal going through. So anyway, let's, uh, I'm going to hook up, um, or well, they're already hooked up, but I'm going to put a game in all the systems. What is going on? Uh, I'm going to put a game in all the systems and uh, turn them on, and then I'll just show you the switching. Okay, so I realize this is probably a bit of an awkward shot, but I just wanted to show you guys that everything is indeed going to both televisions. I have all of my S-Video consoles on at the moment, so let's go to the first one, which would be the PlayStation. And the Frame Meister will probably have to do an HD handshake um, between a lot of these systems, so you'll see it doing that uh, right here. And once we get going, there we go. So I think this is a uh, Silhouette Mirage I put in the PlayStation. Just turn the volume up a little bit so you guys can hear that everything's coming through. Now some of these will be a little bit louder than others, but you can see it's coming through just fine on both televisions. Alright, let's go to the second one, which is the Super Nintendo. Alright, there's the Super Nintendo, and this is uh, Kirby Superstar. Alright, everything's working fine on that one. Uh, third system, N64. And for some reason the N64 is really loud, if you guys can't, can't tell the difference. There's that. Fourth system. is the GameCube and it's doing a uh, quick uh, HD, uh, HDMI handshake and we've got Wario World here. Alright, and our... what system are we on? Five? Six? One, two, three... Five. No. Yeah, five. Okay. That should be the North American Saturn, okay, which has knights in it. And I'll wait just a second, just make sure we've got sound. Any day now. Okay, looks like sound, picture, everything's working fine. Alright, and our last one on this video will be our uh, Japanese Saturn. And of course this is uh, Twin B. Okay, as that's playing, I'm going to go ahead and turn these other systems off here. And now, uh, the other ones that I'm going to show you are the, the ones that are hooked up via composite. Uh, now the first one is the the Sega Genesis, and uh, this is on the automatic switcher. And for some reason, there is some sort of problem with the uh, with the color palette on the Genesis when I send it through the Frame Meister. And honestly, I'm I'm really not sure what the problem is. But I'm going to do an S Video mod, so that should be no problem. See, it's way off now. Um, a few minutes ago, it actually was pretty close. So honestly, I don't I don't know what the problem is, but sometimes the Genesis looks okay. Most of the time, it looks terrible. Um, so I mean, the picture quality is all right. It's just all the colors are wrong. So, but you see the sound still coming through fine. And once I get the S Video mod in place, it should be all right. It may just be a bad connection of some sort. 
right. So there's that. Uh, next we have our Turbo Graphics 16. And we've got Crater Maze in there. And you can see on this one that the color is, is really just fine. I mean, that, there's really all the colors of the rainbow on the screen. Actually, to be 100% honest, the color looks better on the, on the large TV uh, than it does on the CRT. So, uh, so I, think, I think the frame meister is working fine. I think it's just my, uh, my connection with the, with the Genesis. Our last one here is the PC Engine Duo. And this one we have Alien Crush, and once it does its HDMI handshake here, we'll have it on the big screen. And again, this one looks looks great, sounds great, uh, no problems. I do have a couple other systems. Uh, they're hooked up all the time. Of course, a lot of them uh, go through RF. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I almost forgot. I don't have a game in it, but... Here, let me turn on the... I don't know how I could forget the master system. There we go. So we have our Sega Master System. So anyway, um, uh, yeah, that's it. I've got a couple of other systems that I'm planning on uh, doing doing some mods to, some S-Video mods and whatnot, so I'll keep you guys apprised of all that. And uh, I hope you enjoyed the video, and thanks for watching.